Peace and blessings, everyone. I am Michael B. Beckwith, and I'm so glad to be a part of this New Living Expo, a community of transformation, of inspiration, a, 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 a powerful community of souls who are open and receptive to growth, development, and unfoldment, becoming more and never less than their true self. And indeed, as I have been teaching over the years, that true community creates immunity to the lower frequencies of life that as we continue to gather, whether it's virtually or in person, and communities of lovers of life, lovers of infinite potential, lovers are of our innate in nature, we raise our frequency and our vibration and we become immune to the lower frequencies of life. We become immune to doubt. We become immune to worry. We become immune to fear. We become immune to all of that which is now cascading through the human consciousness at this particular time in human history. A particular time in human history where the old paradigm is, is dying, decadence, coming out of cadence with the fundamental harmony of the universe. And a new paradigm is emerging, coming into cadence with the next great iteration of our species and the next great iteration of our planet. But interestingly enough, both of these dynamics are happening at the same time in the same place, but in different dimensions. Obviously, in the Newtonian model, two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time. But in the quantum model, they can because they're vibrating at different frequencies. So the old paradigm of might makes right, he or she who has the most toys at the end of their life wins. The old model of manipulation and materialism, the old model of, of success, material wealth, is beginning to dissolve and having its last hurrah. And the new model, community of love, community of compassion, generosity, sacred service, a new, a new model built upon the awareness of, of that we don't live in a world of scarcity or lack or limitation or not enough this, but a quantum field of abundance where there is enough for every single being on the planet and that there are no extra people calling from the ancient wisdom of the Bhagavad Gita that tells us if you take abundance from abundance, abundance still remains, that you cannot exhaust the good. It is inexhaustible. You can't exhaust the wisdom. You can't exhaust the beauty. You can't exhaust the harmonizing prosperity and elegance and elegance uh, of, of, the, of the universe that when we're living in that field, in that dynamic, we become immune to the lesser frequencies of life. So it's my joy to be a part of this community, this new life community. And of course, we're dealing with a, a powerful theme of transformation, tools for transformation. And of course, when we talk about transformation, we're talking about Trance means to go beyond. So we're talking about going beyond the, the present formation of our life. At the present formation of our life, regardless of how good it is or how challenging it is, is the condensation of previously held points of view and thoughts and opinions and inner conversations. It's the artifact of previously held thinking. So transformation means that we're continually going beyond the present formation of our life and growing and glowing to greater expressions of who and what we really are. We're growing from glory to greater glory. We're, we're moving from becoming more and never less than our true self. Transformation is the only game in town. It means that we're stopping on a regular basis and contemplating the absolute truth that the infinite is within us the infinite and inexhaustible wisdom, the infinite and inexhaustible good, the infinite and inexhaustible life is within us. It is intrinsic to us and that we're here to allow that inner splendor to escape as Robert Browning would remind us. We're here to allow for that inner splendor to be discovered, activated and expressed as a matter of course, as a matter of how we live our life. So we cannot deny that the world is very interesting right now that as I like to say, it's fluxed up, that things are in flux. You have so many things going on on the planet this time in human history. Remember, old is dying, the new is being born. And in this moment of fluxosity, we have to remember that we have a built-in intentionality. Just as every species, 
everything in the creation from the infinite has a built-in intentionality. The trees have a built-in intentionality to grow, to reveal the majesty of the Most High. The flowers have a built-in intentionality to bloom, to reveal the smile of the infinite. You have a built-in intentionality to glorify wisdom, to glorify transformational knowledge, to glorify beauty, to glorify creativity, innovativeness, resourcefulness, to glorify the deep wisdom and the activated genius that lies within you. You have a built-in intentionality. However, the difference between you and all of nature is that it happens naturally for a tree. A tree is placed in a proper condition, proper soil, proper nutrients, proper sunlight, proper hydration, that intentionality is activated and the tree grows, the flower blooms. The difference between us and the tree is that we have to consciously choose that. We have, we're at the stage of our evolution, the, the ending of the apex of one form of evolution, the beginning of another form of evolution. We're, we're at the end of the form of evolution where we grow from ex, by the stimulation of external circumstances only to the next form of evolution, which is conscious evolution, where we actually participate in our own unfolding as those who are the spiritual image and the very likeness of the presence itself. What does that mean? What does we are the image and likeness of God mean? It's talked about frequently, different religions, but often it's not broken down as to what that means. Now we know this presence, this source, it's formless, it's everywhere, it's omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, omniactive. We know that the divine substance and the divine source is everywhere, but we know it's not a man. We know that it's not human. Therefore, the image and likeness does not mean that we physically look like the presence. It means that we share a faculty with the presence. And that faculty is that we have the ability to think independent of circumstances. And we had the ability to be a fresh starting point of a new creative activity, birthing newness in our life experience out of nothing at all. It's the same faculty that the presence has when scripturally it is written in the beginning, God in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God and out of nothing at all, the cosmos and the solar systems and the galaxies and the multidimensional universes and all of nature came into expression without having one external condition. It just burst into the scene out of nothing but a divine idea and a vibrational frequency, the logos of the word and you and I, being the image and likeness of this presence can birth a whole new life out of nothing. But activating our built-in intentionality and out of nothing at all, beginning to contemplate what we want to be, what we want to experience, and the life we want to live. Therefore, participating in our own unfolding pulling our attention away from the world of effects and circumstances and situations, pulling our attention away from the downward spiraling frequencies that are moving through the human experience. So many people in worry, so many people in doubt, so many people in fear, so many people rushing around nervous and anxious, not you, not here, not now, not in this community. We are transforming. We're remembering our built-in intentionality and beginning to birth a whole new world out of no thing at all but an idea, a vision, and a feeling. So we hear perhaps that brown-skinned Palestinian by the name of uh, Yeshua ben Joseph or Jesus the Christ where he said there'll be trials and tribulations in the world, but, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. He described the same trials and tribulations, fluxed up world, so many things going on. But then he gave a spiritual practice. He said, however, be of good cheer. This is not frivolity. Being of a good cheer is activating our deep sense of optimism. 
Remember, an optimist is not a person that doesn't believe there aren't issues or problems. An optimist is simply an individual that knows that behind every issue and every problem, there's already a solution because in a universe, in the quantum field, there can't be a problem without an answer. There, can't, there cannot be an issue without an answer. It cannot exist that way. So the optimist simply knows uh, that, uh, that wherever there's an issue or problem, there's already an answer. Be of good cheer means that we are lifting our vibration to the frequency of such gratitude by our own volition, by our own choice, activating a deep state of gratitude and thanksgiving that we're living from this particular space until that gratitude is not even attached to something to be grateful for. It is merely or simply an attitude that we are carrying. And then we are evoking the sacred law of that if you stay grateful long enough, the universe through its law will give you something to be grateful for. And so Yeshua ben Joseph was saying, be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. I've overcome the world that's full of turbulence. I've overcome the world that's full of fear and doubt and worry. I've overcome that world. I'm in a different world. Now remember here, there is a difference between the world and the planet. The planet is Gaia. The planet is mother earth. The planet is three fourths water. The planet is mountain ranges. The planet is rainforests. The planet is oceans. The planet is deserts. The planet, the planet is a living entity that we sprung from as spiritual beings having a human incarnation being fed by planet Earth, by Mother Earth. That's the planet. It's evolving. It's conscious. But then there is the world. The world and the planet are not the same thing. The world is basically created by a synergetic thoughts, agreements, beliefs, opinions, points of view, and positionalities that we consciously or unconsciously agree with. And that forms our world or worldview. So two people could be standing on the same spot on the planet, but be in different worlds. He said, I've overcome the world. What world did he overcome? The world of lack. A limitation, scarcity, not enoughness, separation, fear, worry. I have overcome the world. There's going to be trials and tribulations in the world, but I want you to be of good cheer. I want you to elevate your awareness into a state of gratitude no matter what. So that the sacred universal presence through its laws can match that frequency and birth a new experience for you. Many of you may remember your parents saying to you, if you do not stop crying, I'm gonna give you something to cry about. Well, the universe through its law says, if you don't stop being grateful, I'm gonna give you something to be grateful for. So be of good cheer is to activate our spiritual practices. Affirmative prayer, sacred meditation, life of visioning, the sacred chant, the song, the dance, the study, the fellowship. We activate good cheer by these potent spiritual practices so that our frequency is lifted. We're of the good cheer, not denying there are, not denying there are issues in the world, but becoming aware that there's a solution to every issue that we see so that we are standing still and seeing the salvation of the Lord. Another way of saying that, we are standing still and, and participating in this self-elevation, self, uh, ele the self-elevation of the great law, Lord, the great law of life. So that's one thing we have to move into. Secondly, we have to move from indolence to reverence. Indolence is inactivity. Indolence is laziness. Worry is lazy, crazy thinking. It is crazy because there is no transformational value in worrying. You cannot worry yourself to good health. You cannot worry yourself to prosperity. You not, cannot worry yourself to creativity. You cannot worry yourself to being a resourceful being. You cannot worry yourself to being innovative. Worrying is like paying interest on money that you haven't borrowed, you see? So it's crazy thinking and it's also lazy thinking. It's indolence, meaning that when worry 
or fear is running amok in your mind, you are to treat it as an emergency, a crisis. That remember, remember this, you have a mind, but you're not your mind. Your mind is a set of programs, you see. You can observe her, the mind, but you're not the mind. So when the mind is going on a worry tear, an anxious tear, a fear-laden tear, that's a crisis. Now, if you were to cut yourself and you were bleeding, you wouldn't just let yourself bleed and, and see where you end up. Well, I'm just going to let this bleed and see, how, how, see what happens. No, you would go in and take the dirt out of that, put some antiseptic on it, you would apply something to it, and then you would allow the healing to begin. When the mind goes crazy with worry, doubt, fear, that's an emergency. That's a crisis. You stop. You clean out those lies. Separation from the presence. Limitation. Scarcity. Lack. Um, something's going to get me. Those are all lies. From the spiritual context, you see, there's more than enough to go around. From the spiritual context, you have everything that you need and want and hope for within your own being. From the spiritual context, you are protected by the frequency. Your frequency is your currency. Your frequency is your destiny. As you lift in your frequency, you walk in a safety zone of freedom and security, you see. So, you, so crazy thinking, lazy thinking, indolence, it's just letting the moods and the attitudes take over. You stop, you become still. You see the self-elevation of the great law, you see. And then you become aware of that service is the fast track to enlightenment. That if you're anxious, you're very anxious, very worried, out of anxiety, that means you have what is called self-confirmatory ideation. You're just constantly looking at yourself. You're, you're looking at your little self all the time. You're too self-involved. That's why that's where the anxiousness is coming from. You're in fight or flight. Oh, I'm gonna get hurt. Oh, I'm gonna die. Oh, I'm gonna lose everything. Oh, I'm not gonna have anything. Stop it. Service is the fast track to enlightenment. If you wanna come out of that kind of anxiety and anxiousness, you find a way to give, you find a way to support, you find a way to serve something, you enter into the field of service, you help somebody. The moment you take your attention off of your little self, stop being so self-indulgent about what might happen to you, energy begins to circulate differently through you. Anxiety lessens, anxiousness lessens, and now you're able to hear. Mm, check this out. You're able to hear the voice of God, but not without ears, Does, and not from a mouth. What do I mean? First of all, God is not made in the human image. God doesn't have a mouth. We're made in the image and likeness of God, and as the old saying goes, we, we, we're made in the image and likeness of God, and we've been trying to return the favor of a six. We've been trying to make God in the human image. So you see uh, references of God being jealous or angry or having chosen people or such non nonsensical superstitious thought, which was right for the evolution of consciousness at that particular time. God is not a man, you see. God is a presence that is never an absence. In this quantum field, it's just it's wisdom. It's transformational knowledge. It's love. It's beauty. It's life, you see. So we hear not with ears, and, we, and the word is spoken not from a mouth. We do not hear because we have ears. We have ears because we hear. Consciousness precedes form. So the consciousness and the faculty of hearing and the consciousness and the faculty of seeing predates ears and eyes. The consciousness of hearing and seeing create the eyes and the ears, you see. So we have this spiritual faculty called hearing the inaudible and seeing the invisible that's now become a prosthetic of seeing and hearing in three dimensions. Now, when in fact, going back to the main point here, when in fact 
worry and doubt and fear, which is crazy thinking and lazy thinking, begin to diminish. The static on the line is dissolved. And you can now hear the voice of God, meaning spiritual ideas begin to take over your life. Inspiration begins to take over your life. You catch an idea, you catch a vision, you catch the activation of your potential. It dawns on your awareness. You're hit with an insight. An insight is an event that takes place in your consciousness where you incrementally or suddenly know something that you previously didn't know or previously only believed. That's the voice of God, the voice of God speaks to you in the language of ideas, in the language of insights, in the language of inspiration. So now you're living an inspired life, pulled by a vision that you're catching in your own awareness because you have come out of indolence and come into a state of reverence. You've come out of lazy, crazy thinking. And now you're in a state of reverence, a reverential alertness to the beauty and the love and the harmony and the wholeness that's everywhere. If we could but see it with our consciousness and hear it with our consciousness. So now what's happening? We are participating in our own unfolding. Through the power of choice, choice comes from expanded awareness. We are participating in our own unfolding. You see, participating in our we're choosing gratitude. We're being of good cheer, overcoming the world that's perpetuated by the media. Lies of separation, lies of lack, lies of limitation. Because in the quantum field, there's an abundance of everything, but it must be seen and caught in consciousness in order to be demonstrated. And then, as we move from indolence to reverence, when anxiety is afoot, it means we're becoming too self-centered, thinking about our little self too much. Am I gonna die? Am I gonna be hurt? We enter into how can I serve? How can I give? How can I share? How can I shine? How can I radiate? The energy now is not self-involved, it's selfless and it is no longer enthralled with negativity. It is involved with the ever-expanding nature of infinite potential. Anxiety is lessened, static is gone, and we catch in our awareness inspiration that makes us what? Resourceful, innovative, innovative and creative. No longer a victim. So regardless of what's happening on the planet, you become resourceful, you become innovative, you become creative, and you do not bow down to any extor external authority figure. What is your authority? Your own conviction of reality. When you know that two plus two is four, you don't bow down to an external authority figure. Your conviction in math is within you. You develop a conviction that this presence that is everywhere called by many names is for you and not against you. Cannot compromise its nature, can't contradict itself, is always being itself. You walk as a woman or a man or non-gender conforming or whatever, however you identify yourself as an individual expression of infinite potential convinced that life is for you. Nothing is against you. Then what happens? As individuals in a sacred community, you grant yourself immunity from the lower frequencies of life. And now you're living a transformed life. You're participating in your own transformation. So hear, hear, hear this now. Even as you hear where I'm at right now, sirens. I look out the window and I see a fire truck that means to me that someone is getting help. Someone, uh, someone is going to help, which means this. When you go into worry and you go into fear, which is common these days, normal, it's not natural, but it's normal. That's an emergency. You don't just let it run its course. 
you stop, you look at the frequency of fear within yourself. You see what lies you're telling yourself. You ferret out those lies and then you apply the truth right where you are, infinite potential is, right where you are, all of your needs are met. Right where you are, everything is working together for your good. You apply the truth. Right where you are, I have something to be grateful for. Something to be thankful for. You apply the truth. And this works for moods, attitudes, thought forms of fear, doubt, and worry. And then when the harbingers of fear, otherwise known as our modern media, are doing their thing, you can reframe it all. You can say, you know what? That's a prayer request for my society. It's a little sick right now. It's not it's just giving me facts about something, but the facts are not denying the truth of my being. And it's the truth of my being that makes me free. It's just giving you something to pray about. And those reporters from an old paradigm, they have nothing on you. Who are you? You now are deputized to become a reporter from the emerging paradigm. We already know what the old paradigm is saying. Lack, limitation, negativity, disease, viruses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Old, what's the new paradigm saying? There's enough for all. Every single individual on the planet has equal access to the divine. There are no superior or inferior races. You see, what is the new paradigm saying? Kindness and compassion and generosity, creativity, innovativeness and resourcefulness, inspiration rules. You see, you must become a reporter of the new paradigm. That's called the good news. Sometimes people call it the gospel, which means good news. So you're able to say unequivocally, as I've said over the years, life is good. I'm not talking about our experience of life, but life itself is unadulterated magnificence. Most people don't experience reality or experience life. They experience their thoughts about it. And when you begin to reorganize your thinking, Oh my God, life is good. Life is for Everything's working together for my good. And you start to have an insight about the beauty of life. So here we are. It's about transformation, going beyond your present formation. Here we are. Tools for transformation. Here we are. Moving from indolence to reverence. Here we are. Vibrating at the field of gratitude. Here we are. Not becoming self-indulgent and anxious and, ang and, and with a, riddled with anxiety and anxiousness, but being of service. Here we are, activating the truth of our being, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Now that is the truth. Now I want you to go forth now and localize the cosmic celebration that's happening eternally and everywhere present. All of nature is celebrating that it gets to, it gets to participate in the realm of the divine. And so can you, but you must choose it. You must participate. Transformation is an acquired taste and it's not a bystander sport. You have to participate. And then you have to acquire the taste of dying daily to that which no longer serves you and embracing the newness of your being that is emerging, housing two parad paradigms at one, watching one die, and a new birth happening inside of your inner soul. I think I'm going to stop now. <laughs> but it's been my joy to accept the invitation to be a part of this dynamically new life expo, a community that's now granting us immunity. That's what I see. Go forth, multiply the consciousness of the all good. Release that inner splendor that is your mandate.